This week on Seeds of Gold, we continue to traverse this lush countryside in Kirhura district, learning from the farmers in this area that have managed to make the soils spit out money through livestock farming. And today, our lenses are focused on largely three young men that have turned cattle keeping into dairy farming at Kamate Dairy Farm in Kanyabihara village, Kirihura district. We dig deep into understanding how this farm is well managed to produce between 850 to 900 liters of milk per day. On arrival, it is evident that on this farm, continuity is key. Parents, guardians in this family are here to supervise and ensure wealth is kept in the family and hard work is instilled in the young generation. The children are applying modern farming and run a large-scale farm. While you're drawing your master plan, you have to be very, very, very keen of continuity because we do not want a situation whereby, uh, let's say our parents are in this business and when maybe they're already elderly and sick, the business or the master plan collapses. We need to ensure continuity. So, like we were taught by our parents while we were still young, I encourage youths out there to show interest. This, this is a very good business. I would also encourage parents to involve their children while they are doing this work at the farm. The kids shouldn't be out in town or they shouldn't be enjoying life. They should be on ground as well because this is a family venture and, and we, are, we, we are living a quality life. I wouldn't say we are so rich or something but we are living a quality life. We, we can actually get anything we want. We are all having bachelor's degrees. We are fine and that is because our parents were able take us through and also their parents were able to take them through. That ensures continuity of the project. While you draw your master plan, please kindly plan for continuity through your children or through a guardian. Put, the, put their interest in that business for prosperous continuity so that your dairy, your dairy farm never stops. Uh, this is a family venture. It is not run by only us. It is, it is a, it's run by our parents and we all take part in decision making. Uh, they, are also, they have also been in this business for quite a while, so the reason as to why they are always in the herd is to identify the sickly animals, to identify the calves that are maybe having any challenges like let's say uh, diarrhea because of excess milk. Uh, they have to be there. It's always about you being there. You have to be there. You have to prepare your team to always be there working, especially when they see you around. For example, when you see our old parents there. When they are at the farm, things normally go well. But let's say if we are to go somewhere else for some few days, maybe functions and parties, you come back and you find that there's some slight disturbances. So that shows you that you, you as the farmer in this business, you need to be aware of what you're doing. You need to prepare a team, a very trustworthy team. And if it's possible, kindly be on farm. With that background, management on this farm is solid. There are key performance indicators that give guidance to where and what the farm is up to. This does not only work in what you call white collar jobs. You can apply the same on your farm. Uh, like any other institution uh, at the farm, you have to be with the, the, the key performance indicators, KPIs. Uh, these are like targets for the farm, where you want your farm to be, what you want your farm to be. Uh, these KPIs uh, include the following. First, we have calf management. Oh, the young stock. Uh, this begins with you, the farmer. Uh, you have to look after your calves right away from birth up to the time they are windowed from their mothers. You have to know the, the number of calves that you have at your farm. You have to know the, number, the death rate of your calves, the calves that are dying, the calves that are sick. You have to treat them. You have to be there at the farm uh, because this is the future herd and it is very important. So, and this also is among breeding. Once you, 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 the, the calves you have, they are supposed to be of a good bull, bull selection. You have to select a good bull so that the, the calves are better than the mothers. So that in the future you have the good herd. Uh, second, we have milk production. Uh, this is dictated on how well you have prepared your fodder or the paddocks. 
for, for zero grazing, the, 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 the fodder. Then for, for, for free range, the paddocks, how you have prepared your paddocks. For example, you have to prepare for the dry spell, which is very important, so that your, your milk production is high. And once you don't do that, your milk production will be low and your income will also be less. When we talk about dairy farming, this automatically signals to make production and without any further ado, we dive into this. While at the farm during this milking session, we were very keen and noticed the udders of these cows. They are quite oversized. Curious to know how this is achieved. The udder is achieved normally through breeding. When we are selecting bulls here, we normally make sure that the bulls we select, their parents, the sires and the dams, have all the characteristics we want in the fusion cow. If the bull's mother had such a good udder, we make sure we look out for that bull and we keep it for the traits. So that all the animals we get have almost the similar traits. That's how we attain this udder. There is more to what dictates the amount of milk a cow is able to give per day. The amount of milk is dictated by one, the number of calvings the animal has, two, the breed of the animal. And the breed also comes in with elements like size. Here at this farm, we look at the American Holstein Frisian cow. We have the Ayrshire, we have the German Red Angler cows, and uh, we cross them, we try to cross them. Uh, the, the, the amount of milk we get per cow, roughly, in a day, is from 15 to 25 liters of, of milk per cow per day. And this is a 100% free range best herd. Uh, this, is, uh, this is because we're able to give them good nutrition through the paddocks. We manage them well, we spray with the worm. We try to put in the work ethic so that you get that, that milk. And also, the cows have been of a very good genetic potential for us to be able to get that amount of milk. Uh, the first time calvers are always between 10 to 15 liters per day, depending on the nutrition you put in and the work ethic and the cow comfort. Also, this is determined by the genetic potential of that animal. Uh, calves, calves are fed primarily on milk for a while, up to the about 80 kilograms. Then from 80 kilograms, we wean them off. They can actually feed on dry matter for the case of zero grazers. But for us, the winners, we provide for them a paddock where there is water and enough pasture. So they graze and have enough time to keep gaining weight. What we need to be careful here is we need weight gain for these calves. So that by the time they are 350 kilograms, they're able to be served. Or for the case of AI, you can inseminate those animals. And at 24 months, you have your first calf. So we ensure that we have a calf per cow per year. You too might be already wondering what features one has to look out for when identifying a good dairy cow. These are the structures of a good Frisian cow. Uh, so right now, when any farmer is starting, there's a question where we say, uh, how can anyone identify a good Frisian cow? Uh, the Frisian cow normally has some structures that we have to look out for. For example, the hook, which is this bone right here, and the pin. Uh, the difference is with uh, beef cows and dairy cows, that beef cows have a lot of meat around this area and the angle of a Frisian cow should be slightly bent from the hook to the pin. And we see that angle very well here shown on the Frisian cow. Then when we talk about our udder, udders of a Frisian cow, when you look at this cow here very well, it has a nice udder, a nice hind udder with a nice suspensory ligament here. This is called the rear udder. You can see it very well. And the rear udder should not be below the hook. Down here, this part we see, is the hook. Any udder that is below the hook is not so good. Any udder that is way above the hook is also not good. It should be medium, as we see. Then teat placement. We talk about teat placement. When we come to teat placement, you see right here that uh, the teats are not placed so close to each other. They, are, they, are, they have that space. There is a suspensory ligament that divides the rear udder from the front udder. This is very important because when we are talking about uh, the udder, the rear udder, the hind udder, makes almost 60% of the cow's milk. 
So you have to be very careful when you're looking at the rear adder. It has to be long, stretched down, downways and long up to the, almost between the vulva and this space here. Then we come to the front adder. The front adder should be smooth and sliding into the cow's body and not rather hanging. The front adder is also very important. Cows that have a front adder that is already hanging down here are not good animals for dairy as we all think. The front adder should be smooth and sliding into the cow's body. Then we come to the rib, the rib cage of a Frisian cow. When you look at this cow, I can be able to place three fingers inside this rib. Uh, very important because cows of beef, the ribs are more closer to each other. What does this space give us? This, spe this space means that uh, the cow is able to feed enough. And also this space means that the cow is, has that large frame for the dairy cows. So it's very important if you can place three fingers in between this, then that could be also a good way to identify a, a Frisian cow. Then we talk about the triangular shape when seen from above. When you come behind this animal, you will see that this hook and this hook are widespread apart. And then it comes slowly thinner, thinner to make the triangle shape of a good dairy cow. The hooks of a Frisian cow should be spread far, far, apart, far, far wide apart from each other and come, and come slender to the top through the neck till here. So when viewed from the upper view, it has more of a triangular shape. Thin comes here, widening out. That is what we call the triangular shape when viewed from an area view. That is very good while identifying a Frisian cow. Then we come to the chest of the animal. The chest of the animal should be deep and wide. The, the, the space left between these animal's front legs should be seen very well. That is what we want. Then we talk about the legs. Uh, since our animals are free-range grazers, we look at these legs very, very carefully. If you are to see these animal's legs, they are not spread wide apart. They are, they are straight. They, they, that means they have, there is some longevity. They don't get uh, problems with their hooves while, while they age. Uh, the other part we can, uh, we, can, we can look at is the hind parts, these pins here. These pins should be wide enough and it, it, it encourages the cow to be able to, to push the baby so well, the, the calves. While giving birth, it encourages the calf to have enough pathway. That is how we are able to identify a good Frisian cow through structures. We will take a short commercial break. Now that we know what animal we want to bring to the farm, how then do you prepare it so as to start on a good note? And good management of free-range version cows, one has got to be intentional on how to separate these different cows on the farm. These young men have applied this method and it has not disappointed. Aine and Mark take us through how to manage this better. Before you bring in your, your, your animals to, to the farm, you have to stock the pregnant animals so that they get used. Let me say you're starting a farm, you have to bring in the pregnant animals so that they get used to the environment, the, 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 the food they are going to eat, the, the situation there, so that by the time they are going to give birth, they have already adapted to the situation and you're able to have good calves, good calving, among others. Then for the free range, you have to draw a systematic program for, for your farm. You have to have paddocks. You have to prepare for the dry spell for your cows so that you bring in, you're able to bring in your cows and you start your farm. For 100 cows, you need about 200 acres for you to properly manage them. Well, we, di we distribute them according to, according to age. We distribute them according to what they do. For example, like my brother told you, you have to distribute your animals. The lactating herd has to be left alone 
the non-in cuffs have to be left alone. The in cuffs have to be put alone for better supervision. You have to be able to, to distribute your cows easily. It also gives them comfort because we look at the situation where the, the lactating herd is feeding together with the non-in cuffs. They're going to be disturbed because some of these non-in cuffs previously belonged to the, to the milking herd, they were calves. So they're not going to let the mothers feed well. We need to distribute them off and let them feed well while the lactating herd also has its peace. So it's, that's why we distribute animals really. Uh, well, uh, the traditional cows are there, they do have a certain paddock, but they are not as much because traditionally these cows are not able to, they, they do not make any economic sense when it comes to quantities of milk. When we look at quality, they have a very high butterfat content. Unfortunately, in this area, we are not offered a higher price for quality milk. We actually offer the higher price for quantity. If you have so much milk, then you're going to have that good price. You can even dictate it. But when you have the quality milk and it's less, then economically, it will not even help you run the farm because you know you have human resource, you have maintenance of all this stuff. You need to buy drugs. You need to, you need to, be, you need to be able to provide water for the animals and other concentrates, maybe the iron, the, the salt blocks and ETC. So, the local animals literally cannot sustain themselves. You have to get money out of your pocket and re-inject them. For the free range, this is called paddocking. So you have to do a systematic, you have to prepare a systematic program for your farm. Uh, you know where you're going to put the lactating animals. You know where you're going to put the, the, the pregnant, the, 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 the dry, the dry animals. You have to also put them somewhere else so that they get prepared they, 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 because they are pregnant, you have to take care of them so that you can supervise them so well. They, are, they don't have to mix all the cows. Not very different from Aine, Mark adds to the basic requirements needed for increased milk production on a particular farm, more especially how it's achieved on this farm. Uh, there are basic requirements while doing uh, agribusiness or milk production. First, we look at the genetics of the animals that we, that we want. If you're looking at a dairy farm or a dairy business, you need to be very, very sure that you're helping animals reach their genetic potential. For example, you can opt to use artificial insemination, you can use embryo transfer, and at that our farm currently we are doing breeding bulls, superior breeding bulls, stroke sires. Uh, the, other, the other factor I would like to consider would be nutrition. For our case, we are doing a rotational grazing, we are using paddocks. What do we need to do if we are using paddocks? We have to make sure our paddocks are very, very clean. Uh, we remove the weeds, for example, the Lantana Camaras, uh, the Biden Spilosa, Obiden Spilosa, the Phytolaca Dot Kanka, and many others. So that is very important when you come to the nutrition part. You have to prepare well the paddocks, also for the dry spell, so that the production is, minim is, 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 is on the same level. You don't have to be getting a lots of milk during the rainy season. Then when it comes to the dry season, you dip. That means you did not prepare well, and the nutrition there is important. Uh, the other factor we see is cow comfort. You have to make sure that your cows are comfortable. Like the way you see behind me, these animals are chewing cud. They are regurgitating their food. They, they, they look peaceful right now. They are satisfied and happy. So that means they are comfortable. Any cow that is comfortable will be able to give you exactly what you want. Then another issue where we go wrong is the management. Uh, many of us are telephone farmers. We leave our farms and we leave them for the managers who are sometimes not even trained on how to do this. We have to be, with a dairy venture, you have to be at the farm. You have to be there to supervise. The Kiswahili word is kusimamia. You need to supervise your farm. Like my brother told you, it is what you, it is what you inspect that gets done, not what you expect. So that's when management comes in and you as the head of the farm, you have to be there. Uh, those are the key those are the key pointers I would like to put out when you're starting any venture in uh, this dairy business. Next week on Seeds of Gold. Uh, the way you identify a sick cow is actually better in the morning. First of all, you first look at the, the ears. We continue with this amazing enterprise that has seen people get rich. Daily income is the way to go.